back at it and we got the correct size bore hone that is a three and three quarter inch 240 grit hone from flex hone there's the box maybe you can see the numbers and so we're going to be using that and we're also going to be using flex hone lube both of these came off of amazon um i had the four inch bore it's too large for this i think this bore is 3.785 so it's a little bit bigger than three and three quarters but it feels like that thing's going to fit in there pretty well none of these look too bad uh, there's a little bit of surface rust because this thing did sit with the heads off of it uh, but the biggest reason for doing this is putting new rings in it we want to raise the cross hatching a little bit and this thing should do that perfectly so let me get the camera set up and we'll start honing some of these that that's about the right speed there that angle matches what i can see uh, was left behind from the factory cross hatching the first one i did i went a little too fast i think it's a little steeper than a 45. You see a significant difference. These just look polished. I mean, there's cross hatching there, but uh, there's a lot of oil. There's a lot of oil buildup in there, and there's a lot of just wear. They look kind of polished. That looks nice. So that'll help those new rings seat in. Today, I'm going to show you how to turn these nasty 200 plus thousand mile pistons into this we're going to be using a product called gunk parts cleaner comes in a gallon bucket and basically what you just saw was a piston straight out of the engine i did soak these in diesel fuel to see if that would help and it didn't do much i have soaked the pistons you can fit about three in the can um, i've soaked some pistons for 24 hours this is what they look like straight out of the container you can see they have some build up and then these are the ones that i have cleaned with a brush um so let me get the camera set up and i'll show you the process to do that okay so once you've had your piston soaking for about 24 hours they'll look something like this so then I'm taking a, a brass brush and just giving it a little scrub. For the top, I'm using a plastic brush because these weren't super dirty. And then we're gonna go around all the ring grooves. So that's basically the process for that. Um, Once you've got it scrubbed pretty well clean, I took a part of a piston ring and I'm just using the, the cut side, not the broken side that's all jagged. And just go in there and scrape out your ring groove and then do the next two go all the way around doing that and once you get that done it'll look like I can't see <clears throat> it'll look like this 
And once you get it to this point, you're gonna to wanna to take a pick tool and clean out where the oil returns are <clears throat> for the oil ring. And I would say if you're only gonna clean one thing, if you're not gonna take the time to clean the whole piston, at least clean these out. Because if your oil's not returning back, then eventually it's gonna work, work its way up and then you're gonna start consuming oil, smoking. So if you've got it apart, I would at least do this step right here. You wouldn't have to soak it or anything. You could just take maybe a pick tool and some brake clean, but at least get this part cleaned out. And you can see just how much, maybe you can see. And then once I get that all scraped out, I'll dip it back in the cleaner and just take the brush and go over those areas. And that's it, I'm calling that done. I don't see a reason to really turn it around and soak the rod. So that's the process. Now we're ready to put the camshaft in it. So uh, we're gonna put some assembly lube on uh, the bearing portion of the cam and also on the cam lobes. So we'll put some assembly lube on it and then we'll be ready to slide the camshaft in. Just don't nick that bearing. You gotta be super, super careful when you're doing this part. And make sure you put it in there the right way. There we go. You can see these are keyed. You just line the keys up to the groove. Okay, so if you're doing this at home, um, you just take the plastic gauge Lay it right on top of the each of the crank journals. And then we're gonna put the caps on it with the bearings, torque everything down to spec, and then take it off and we'll measure the plastic gauge to see how it looks. Let's go on the outside. Or shorter. All that, just turn around and take it right back off. <laughs> hey, this ain't no junkyard build. We gotta do it right. That's right. So yeah, now we're just gonna go, go around. Unbolt every one of them caps back off and then we'll check our plastic gauge. You can see the squish here or I don't know if you can see that one there. What you're going to do is take the gauge and we're going to hold this up and find where it lines up. Right there looks pretty close. Yeah, so it looks like a 0 0.0015. One and a half thousandths. Same here. So that's how the plastic gauge works. You get this with every packet that you get. You get two of these. The green is uh, one to three. Red is two to six. It's got inches on one side, millimeters on the other. And we'll just repeat that process for the other four caps. If everything checks out, looks good, 
we'll put a little bit of assembly lube on it. And put, put it back, it back in. in. Tight at first, once that lube hit yeah. all the way around, it's good. All right, so we got the main caps back on, the bearings are in it, it's lubed. Now we're going to do our final torque. We've torqued them all to 15 foot pounds. The torque spec that I found is 15 foot pounds, initial torque, and then you do 51 degrees on the outer studs and 80 degrees on the inner bolts. That torque spec came from Summit's website. So, yeah. All right, now we can put the side bolts in, and they just go to 18 foot pounds. You got them right there? Yeah, they look like a 10. Yeah, I think so. All right, here we go. Uh, when you got your piston ring compressor set up, I found that just one good hit is the best way to get it in. If you try to work it in slow, a ring will pop out underneath. There's just no way to hold it down tight enough, so you just get it lined up and kind of, that's it. When you figure out how the tool works, it works great. Yep. Just took some minute to get that part figured out. <laughs> and not bearing off? No. Um, and the last part we did the main caps so now those now the main caps are all installed they're torqued they've got <clears throat> they have assembly lube on them and they're ready to go so what i've done is we've installed all the pistons and i've just gone in and hand tightened all of the rod caps so that as i spin the crankshaft over the rods can move the pistons can move up and down as they need to and i'm not fighting rods falling off the crank and trying to keep all of that straight so I'm going to start by just taking off cap number one and cap number two. And also it's important to know before you torque these that there are two different style rod bolts and you need to identify if you have the first style or the second style. These I have ident identified as the second style um, and these are also getting replaced. I have new rod bolts. But I'm not going to install those until after I've plastic aged it because I don't want to torque those new bolts twice. All right, so the spec that I found is 15 foot pounds. All right, so we got our 15 foot pounds. Now we're doing 85 degrees. That's the spec that I found for the second version of the rod bolts. And just like before, just taking the caps back off. So yeah, maybe you can see there a little bit better uh, exactly how this works. And you can see we're coming in right at two. Um, and the spec is 0 .0009 to 0 .003. Yeah, so we're uh, on the looser end of the spec, but still in spec at .002. Um, and the whole purpose of this is really just to tell you if your your clearance is way too tight or way too loose. Um, but just seeing that they're close to spec gives me the confidence to go ahead and put this thing back together without sending the rods out or sending the crank out or anything like that. So. Now that we've checked these two, I'm gonna get my new rod bolts, <clears throat> put a little bit of assembly lube on here, put these on and final torque these. Then I'll rotate the crankshaft over and do the next set, then the next set and continue on like that. So.